Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Okay, this is a, a recording lecture for continuing our previous topic, which is tessellation data model. Okay, last class, we have learned about topological vector data model. And right now, we are going to continue with tessellation data model. Okay, tessellation is a generic term for cellular data model, which is the popular term is raster. Okay, in raster, data is divided into cells with certain shapes and size. Okay, in raster, every cell has a value, which is they are coded with a value to represent a certain attribute. For example, okay, this is the raster data. What at the back, what in the, what, uh, in the behind is actually each feature is coded. Okay according to the cells, according to the pixel coded with a certain attribute. For example, features number two. Okay, we see it is a, we see it is a commercial land use, okay, commercial area. So how it is coded in raster? It is coded as a, because uh, this, Commercial land use have a, is a set, is a what I call uh, identical features. So it will it is it is encoded with the same value, which is number two. Okay, and similar goes to the number one, which is residential area. We see uh, it is a residential area, but how it is coded? It is coded by pixel with the same value which is this one the example is encoded as a one okay raster data okay in gis is a is quite common it normally used as a background backdrop to map to display map okay back backdrop which is you overlay with the uh, vector vector data of river and also it is also a source for at uh, a source for your GIS database, which is you can digitize, okay? Digitize a raster data to extract ground features. And then raster data also used for creating a surface model and also for modeling, okay? For modeling, for spatial analysis. Okay, normally GIS software, okay? They allow you to present a uh, raster data set, okay, which is overlay raster data set with vector features. Okay. How data set in raster okay, are stored? So it is stored okay, by encoding values for each pixel. Each cell, okay, this one we call it cell, eh? each cell has the same value. Each, no, each cell has this has the same width, okay, width, width, and height, okay, and then the the spatial extent, okay, the coverage of the raster defined by the coordinate, okay, this one, the column we call x location and y we call it uh, row, row, okay, and the origin of raster data set is at this here, which is upper left corner, which is uh, opposite with the uh, vector data set, which is normally the origin is at the upper, um, which is at the bottom. Okay. And then 
the spatial extent also stores okay the cell size and also the number of grid the number of grid rows and column okay okay this is example for example the blue the blue one is a all the blue one is encoded as a one so in your table you store it as a the attribute as a water and they and it count how many cell encoded as a one so there's 12 cell okay and then normally okay normally uh, a cell normally you will you will if you get a spatial data or if you request a special raster data they will tell they will inform you that the spatial resolution is uh, 30 meter okay so what is mean by the spatial resolution of 30 meter okay can anyone explain okay i have i have one task for you which is right in your padlet okay i will give you the link uh, after this video which is task number one please list five examples of raster data okay in raster data okay raster data is stored okay is stored in a pixel okay and you can verify okay the rows the number of rows and the number the columns okay the number of rows and the number of column by okay by using the resolution by by using the cell size given okay for example okay by from the coordinate okay normally in raster data you can also uh, figure out what are the coordinate okay for example here okay they give you the x okay the x and y coordinate at the lower left corner okay and x and y coordinate at the upper right corner okay upper right corner here this is the coordinate for the lower left and this is the coordinate for the upper right and then by okay using this existing coordinate at your raster data you can calculate how many rows how many pixel how many pixel by counting the number of rows and column okay so can you calculate okay what are the uh, number of rows and number of column if you are giving if you are given by if you are given this parameter okay so how to calculate number of rows okay okay how to calculate number of rows okay you just uh, using the coordinate okay and using the cell size okay cell size for example rows rows is here okay how to count the number of rows the number of rows how to count the number of column in your raster data set okay how to now count the number of rows so you're using this coordinate which is the upper right corner okay upper right corner okay for example this one eh? okay okay you have this one what are the coordinate okay you have this one you have the cell you know you have the coverage okay and it is the meter size okay and then they give you what are the x and y coordinate at the lower left corner so lower left corner is lower left corner is here okay okay and they give you the coordinate at the upper right corner upper right corner okay right is here Okay, and then okay now is 
number of rows. Okay, number of rows is here. Okay, this is number of rows. How to count number of rows? So you are using this coordinate five one nine one. Okay, here. Okay, the coordinate number of rows is y. Okay, so which is y? This is y. Okay, y minus another y. Okay, this one. Y one minus y two. Okay. Okay. And then you divide by the cell size, which is the, the width or the height is 30 meter. So you divide by 30 meter. So you get the number of rows. Okay. And then how to count the column? Okay. This is the column. How many column? Okay, so column is you are using the okay, column is you are using the x, okay, you are using the x, okay. So you get they give the, the clue, okay, they give you the coordinate of x1, then the one they give you the uh, the another coordinate x, isn't it, of this one, okay, so this one. The coordinate is this one, isn't it? So x two. So this is x, isn't it? Uh huh. So the, you you will you need to minus that one minus and divide by the cell uh, width, which is thirty meter, and you get the number of column. Okay. Disable this one. No. Okay. We need to disable this one. How to disable? Okay. Next is, okay, by using the coordinates, okay, given by the raster data, you can also derive another coordinates, okay, another coordinates, okay. Okay, how to derive coordinates, okay, that define each cell. For example, they give you this coordinate, the origin, okay, how you can define the coordinate of number one. Okay, and the coordinate number two, and the coordinate number three. Okay, if you have this coordinate and also the cell size. Okay. Okay, so how to define? Okay, you give this. This this is x. This is y. So x. Okay. How to define what are the values? X is for number one, X is uh, similar with the origin. Okay, the difference is in the Y, isn't it? The Y. So Y is here. So the difference is, so this is origin. So the origin minus the 30 meter. So you get this coordinate. Okay, next, what is the coordinate of number two? Okay, coordinate number two. So what are the similar? What is identical? The other uh, identical is the y, isn't it? The y axis. So the difference is in the x, okay? In the x, because the x is moving from here to here. So you plus 30 meter. So you get this new coordinate. So how about in the middle? Okay, what about the middle? The middle, so you're using the origin. Okay, the origin, the middle is the half, isn't it? The half half size of the, half size of the, uh, of the, uh, the uh, the length of the pixel, isn't it? So plus 15 and this one is plus 15. Okay, this is X. X, okay, you're supposed to go here. So this plus 15 and another one Y. Y, you need to go down. So minus 15. So by using the parameters given in your raster 
data, you can generate the coordinates, the other coordinates of your features just by using the existing coordinate and the rust and the uh, cell size. So in your in your the task number two, okay, right in your padlet, what is the meaning of 30 meters spatial resolution? Okay, raster data, normally if you have raster data, it is, uh, you know, attached with the spatial reference, okay, or you need to georeference, okay, you need to georeference and it will have the spatial reference information so that you can overlay the raster data with other spatial features. Okay, this is the example of world file, okay, in a, a world file from, from uh, to use in the ESRI, yeah? as a software, which is how they store the references of raster data. So this is the example, okay, which is normally what they have is the cell size. So this is the cell size. Okay, cell size, remember, we have talking about cell size in the previous slide, okay, 30 meter resolution, uh, no, 30 meter cell size. So this is the cell size for this one. And what are the rotation of the image in the Y axis? X axis and then cell size in the direction of Y. Okay, Y, Y, yeah. Just go down and the coordinate of the center of the upper left. Okay, upper left and Y, the center uh, which is at the up, which is the, at the origin, eh? the origin. Okay, the, the okay the common example of translation data model is uh, remote sensing data, which is image. Uh, some uh, the one uh, one of the example of remote sensing data is image satellite, which is data are stored in the pixel, where each pixel have a value, which is digital number, uh, representing what are the uh, signature, what are the uh, what are what which is represent that value represent which what features on the ground which is representing spectral signature of an object okay okay this is example how how normally uh, what what we can use this one example of you want to extract what are the water features okay in the uh, in the remote sensing data okay you can extract water features is it you can see the blue the blue line you can also extract okay the boundary of the vegetation area okay the boundary of the uh, land use land cover okay what you can see here okay if you have the if you have a uh, you know a good spatial resolution uh, data you can extract more detailed features okay and normally and uh, the raster data also can become a background backdrop okay you can overlay with your existing road okay and the existing reverse in a vector okay so example here okay you extract you, you digitize okay the water bodies okay this is example of satellite image part of uh, you know part of Johor Bahru okay the data is actually in a pixel if you try to zoom in you can see the pixel so in data mode in translation data model how they start okay oh no no translation data model there are three form there are three uh, types which is regular nested and irregular and normally translation data model okay is used to store continuous data continuous data okay uh, for example ground surface temperature variation okay and then uh, there are three approach okay uh, in data model okay which is um, this is for regular tessellation 
So you represent the data model in a square or rectangle, rectangular, where the most popular one is a square. Okay, square. And the resolution is depend on the pixel size. And uh, normally remote sensing and scan data. So it is stored okay, in a square, uh, square tessellation model. And then uh, another approach is triang triangular, which is a model used in uh, generating a digital terrain model and also hexagonal. Or may, may, this one is normally for uh, if you want to minimize data storage. And then regular tessellation, okay. Normally, um, the issues if you're using regular is data storage because it requires a large volume to store your data because the data is stored in the rows and column. Therefore, normally, it needs to be compressed. Okay, there are two uh, common of compression, uh, lossless and Lucy compression. And then... Uh, there are other uh, compression, they call it wave load transform. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is actually what are the, you know, what are the, what are, what representing or the definition of wave load transform, which is they preserve, they preserve the cell values and allow original raster to be reconstruct. Okay but it cannot reconstruct fully, okay? But it is good because it, it, it can achieve higher compression ratios, okay? And it's good for background image. And in this uh, wavelet transform, so they treat as image as a wave, Okay, and decompose the wave into simple. Oh, okay. Actually, this one is looseless. What is looseless compression? Sorry. What is looseless compression? Which is to they loose, uh, lossless. They preserve the cell values. Okay, and allow original raster to precisely reconstruct. Okay, and there's another compression which is uh, lossy, which is they cannot reconstruct the fully the original image, but it could. It is good. Okay. Because it have it achieve higher compression ratios, ratios and wave load. Wave load, okay. How they treat the image? They treat image as a wave, and it will uh, decompose into a simpler wave load. I think if you want to, uh, know, um, find out further about this, you can try to find out in the literature. So the advantage of raster data set are, okay, it. Uh, the concept is simple. Okay, the advantage and data storage is very compact, and it has uh, it has well established algorithm to process raster data. And then they say elevation data if you store in a raster format, okay, it is normally uh, inexpensive, okay, in inexpensive. But the disadvantage is. Uh, to represent the rigid, uh, to represent the you know the grid structure, does that does not not uh, does not confirm conform to the terrain, uh, the variety of terrains, which is to model the you know the variety of uh, structure using a grid. So it is challenging, and then the original data is not maintained. Okay, if you in in raster, the original data is not maintained because uh, if if you interpolate the data, if you interpolate the data, okay, because uh, the data need to be interpolated uh, according to a grid, okay, and then linear features cannot be represented well. For example, road you cannot uh, represent it well, okay, the curve, okay, uh, the curve of the roads or the river if you are using raster data. And then how raster data is encoded, okay? How they store data, data structure. We normally is cell by cell encoding, run length encoding, and also another one is quad three, okay? Cell by cell encoding, okay? This is example of um, cell by cell encoding. Okay, this one cell by cell encoding. So each cell have a value. 
each cell have encoded a value. Okay, cell by cell encoding, which is they said is a simplest, okay, simplest structure. Cluster data is stored in a matrix like this, row number 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, and it's written into a file by using row, row, according to the row. Okay, run length. Run length is a structure data, but they try to group. Okay, they try to uh, record the cell values by row and by group. Okay, row by row and by group. Okay, for example, row number one eh, by row and by group, which is uh, row one. So what they try to group five and six. Okay, so they said it record the cell values in run. For example, row one, for example, it have a, a two, you know, adjacent cells in column five and six. Okay, and it has the value one. Okay, or eh, or uh, or it has. Because it we gray, we can consider it. You can encode it as a one, and then so it will encode, okay, encoded with one run. It will encode it beginning with column five and six, beginning it column five and ending in column six. Okay, similar with other rows. Okay, they try to uh, encode. Okay. Uh, this one, they try to encode the column number four and six. Okay, they try to encode different values. Okay. By group. Okay, they try to encode different values by group. Okay. Next is quad three. 